Hey guys, today I wanted to walk you through setting up my travel palette. Um, I recently did a video on setting up my, my larger palette that I got a new one. Um, so if you're interested in hearing, in, in that video I kind of go through the process of like um, the transformation I guess of how I got to the colors that I did. So if you're, if you're interested in that, I would definitely watch that one first. Uh, doing that immediately kind of made me think that this palette, my, this is the one that I, my second palette ever had, I uh, use it all the time. Um, as soon as I was finished the other one, I thought, man, there's a few things that I would love to, to revamp on this one to make it more useful for me um, and more what I would enjoy. And so I thought I would walk you guys through the process of that. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is take it apart, pull everything apart. So you can see that, clean it up, and then put in the new colors and everything. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in seeing my process through that, I'll talk a little bit about which colors I pick and why. Um, yeah, I hope this is helpful for you, and uh, enjoy. All right, you guys. So you can see I've got my palette here. The first thing that I've done, I've already pulled up one side. It was pretty hard to <laughs> get it in. I had to pull this. Uh, I think this pan, although it may have been out already, um, out just to get it out. <clears throat> so this is the bottom of it. The first thing I'm going to do is clean up all of this around the edges. I'm not probably going to worry too much about the actual pans themselves, but like all of this in the hinge. Uh, this isn't too bad around here. I've got some, it looks like rust, but I'm pretty sure that's just paint. Um, so I'll clean that up and then I'm going to just start popping each of these out as well. I know I'll do that first. Some of them will come out a lot easier than others. Uh, I know that in my last palette video, a couple people were talking about other ideas for how to fix these um, pans in, um, magnets and things like that. My, th I've found like this is taking a lot of work. That's a sticky tack. Um, so for me, oof, uh, I really don't need anything beyond sticky tack with how difficult it is to get these out. Um, you can see there, sticky tack at the bottom. So pull all of those out. Some of these are not going to make their way back in. This guy is not coming back in. These guys will. Very much used. There we go. All cleaned out. So now I'm just going to clean this part up too. You know what guys, change of plans. I'm just gonna take this whole thing and go run it under some water. The only thing I'm gonna leave is this because I, I that is a decent amount of um, turquoise and I actually do use that and this white. I do have some white there. The rest of it I'm planning to just wash off at this point. It's no big deal. All right, you guys. So I went and ran this underwater and managed to clean up everything. Left the two kind of larger paint spots the white I'll leave on all the time. Turquoise is coming into my palette, so I'm not really going to need that, but I'll use it up first and then I'll get into the, the turquoise pan that I'll have. So yeah, looking, I mean, there's still some little bits you can see. I can probably work away at those if I want, but I'm also just aware that this is going to get pretty painted up pretty fast again. Um, I might just notice these, so I might scrub away at those a little bit. But other than that, I don't want to put too much work into it when it's just going to get painted again. All right, you guys. So as you can see, I have my, I've actually got my three palettes in here. Uh, this is the one that I just finished. You can see a, a video for that one. My, my new palette that I kind of use in my quote unquote studio that has um, kind of all the colors that I have. So this is the one that I'm working on here now. Um, so you can see uh, what I've done is just taken here, I'll double click on it for you. I've just taken the Daniel Smith um, color charts and then what I've done is just uh, cropped it down to each individual thing. So each of these is just a copy and pasted copy of the 
color chart you can see so I could move them and change them that way if I wanted but um, yeah I can move them around you know and just uh, play around with the spots obviously this is just to give me an idea I kind of counted so you know I've got six on each side um, you can see my yellows I cropped again further in half because I'm thinking of splitting my yellows into two half pans that's the only half pans that I'm thinking I'll use and the only choice that I haven't decided is about the sap green and the thalo blue um, and or cerulean blue I'm trying to decide if I you know get rid of sap green if I do then I put in thalo blue in which case I can mix my own greens with this um, that gets rid of my convenience green but then these these two colors are fairly similar so then will I not need those um, in which case then you know I have to ask myself well do I then pull that one out keep this one here put the sap green back in but then do I need a sap green and a thalo blue that's the question that I have to decide so what I may end up doing is probably just leaving it this way um, the way that I had it and then I think I have an extra pan or two so the reality is if I change my mind and I don't like the way that I'm doing it um, it's easy enough to just go back and change it you can see a little sneak peek this isn't really that cool but uh, <laughs> I just I thought it would be a neat idea to go through and there's all these Mayan colors I have Mayan orange that's the only one I've um, bought but uh, all these Mayan colors by Daniel Smith and I was like wow that would be a cool little palette to do is just using the Mayan colors because there's quite a range you've got your yellows you got your red your violet your blue so I'd be interested to see what they are how they would work together except of course that they're all series three which if I remember right they the series three seem to cost more so it's kind of an expensive experiment and honestly the only reason that I would do it is just because I think the whole Mayan name is cool and the fact that they're all, all the same it's kinda like lends themselves to it but for me that's probably not good enough reason to spend whatever that would cost to buy all of those colors for one palette so yeah this is the tool that I use to kind of play around with my ideas for the palette um, you know switch colors in and out and have a look and kind of be able to uh, visualize it without having to do all that you know physically um, so yeah pretty easy this is just in Google drawings um, I, I would have loved like an app or something but no one's made that and so I just ended up making this myself all right you guys so I have my pans that I'm gonna be reusing uh, I've got you know uh, seven of them so another five to fill. <clears throat> so I have these here. Uh, this is a packet of them that my, I ordered and then had my brother send them with my parents when I met them for Christmas. Um, so yeah, these are these are not the same as I had. You can see this is, I don't know if you, yeah, Meaden. Uh, I've, I've written the name on the side, um, which I don't have a Sharpie. So I do plan to do that with these. Uh, so they're a different company, but they look like they're pretty much the same size, so that should work fine. Uh, and then I have my color here, so the first one that I need to do, which I used to have in a half pan, is my Pyrol Scarlet. And you can see something that I don't want to do, these ones, I don't think I've, I don't think I've filled these, these ones I've only filled once. And you can see how the paint itself has pulled away from the sides. Part of that just may have to do with the color and kind of the way that it drives but this one I did manage to get all the way to the edges which I'm much happier about um, so yeah as I was getting ready to film this I actually when I pulled these out of the packet I thought you know I, I do wonder I've heard this with the palette like that it helps to wash it just to get any residue off and so I did go and wash these um, before I started recording there's a tiny bit of moisture in the corner um, just because I wondered if that actually makes a difference you know if there's a little bit of like coating on the plastic that maybe is partly why those other ones pulled away so all I do is take the paint I might be able to see if I can zoom in here a little more for you there we go so yeah when I p fill the pans up I try to go 
as close as I can to the edges. and something like that. I don't fill it all the way, that's the mistake that I made at the beginning. Um, but what I do then is I take a bobby pin, which I've straightened out, which I stole from my wife. Don't know if she knows that I have it, but I've had it a long time. And then I just stir kind of the edges and make sure that those spots are really, are really mixed in all the way to the end. This pyro scarlet is quite liquidy. Um, which may be, I think this was a culprit for drying weirdly the first time. So I don't know whether that's part of it. It's just the consistency of the paint and then how much liquid comes out as it dries. But yeah, make sure that it's all kind of stirred in nicely. Um, I remember the first time I did it, I, you know, these are Daniel Smith paints and I spent a fair bit of money. And so I was so worried about uh, keeping every little last bit so right what I did right there you know wiping it on a paper towel I remember wiping it somewhere where I could save it because I didn't want to waste it um, and then I used it in painting and at this point honestly it's it's not worth it so there's my pyro scarlet uh, it's about halfway filled or something so I'm gonna let that dry probably a day and then tomorrow or another day whenever I think of it I'll be filling it the rest of the way so yeah I'll just repeat the process for all the rest of my colors now These are done. I'm just gonna let them dry and uh, like I said I'll come back to them later and do the second fill and and then we'll be putting them into the palette. All right you guys so uh, you can see here's my pans filled up full. This is half to full. You can see some cracking in here so that's kind of what I was talking about. Um, if you if I was to fill that the whole way those cracks would be all the way through and they'd be really hard to fill. Whereas this is just halfway, so when I go to do a second fill on this one, which I'm not putting in, this is kind of an experimental one I might try, um, then then it'll fill up nicely like this one. So here are my colors. Oops, sorry for bumping you there. Here are my colors all nicely filled. You can see my half pans are weirdly, like slightly bigger than the others. So this happened last time too, where I just had like a pan hanging off the corner of my tray. So here's the tray itself. Um, so we're just gonna make it work. So uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do, we're gonna be using sticky tack. So I've got a whole bunch here. Uh, so I gotta pull some of that off. I've arranged the colors out the way that I had them on my, uh, my little program. So I've kind of gone yellows to um, yeah yellow reds blues and then um, on this side kind of the earth earthy green turquoise and then my Payne's gray uh, I thought about switching it out for a neutral tint instead of doing Payne's gray but I actually really like the uh, I like the Payne's gray it, I, I got used to, I was originally looking for neutral tint and um, ended up just buying Payne's Gray because that was all that this one store had. But I kind of fell in love with it in some ways just because um, it, it's a little more moody than neutral tint. Neutral tint is very utilitarian, which is super great. But um, Payne's Gray is, is so nice. It has this bluey kind of tint to it. I love painting with it by itself for kind of monochrome, monochrome sorry, painting. Um, so I really like that. I'm just going to do, I was going to do a single strip per thing. I'm going to put a couple more down so we can kind of get the both ends of the pan. Um, I'm wondering if I should have made them fatter 
it's kind of been a little while since, well, I, I guess I just did this for my, my other palette. So I should remember how this went with this one, but somehow I don't. Maybe I wasn't paying much attention as I did this part. All right, so that's that. So now I start putting these guys in. I'm gonna try to squish them as far up and as tight as they can go. Because when we get to the to the far end with the yellows is where we're gonna have a bit of squeezing in to do. Just pushing them down and then trying to push them that way as well. Now the funny thing is, as I was you know getting ready to put these in, I was rethinking again this my carmine. I'll talk a little more about the different colors that I chose to put in here. Um, but that's one that I just, I don't know, I put it in there because, you know, it makes sense to have a cool red, but I use it so seldom, which I probably, you know, I probably should be using it more. So here, I'm going to push this yellow ochre a little further that way, maximize my room, and then I think I'll put in a little more sticky tack just on the corner here because I feel like we're going to be hanging this guy over the edge which is fine. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. This will work for now. All right, so now the next tricky bit, which I remember I had trouble with last time, especially when I'm doing this kind of overloaded palette, is getting it to fit in here. And you can see, I don't know if you can tell, oh, let me move it in here. This corner, because it's sticking out, it sticks out beyond this edge. So uh, I think what I did last time is I just put that edge in first and then slid the whole thing in. And it's kind of one of those cases that it, you can make it go in and pulling it out is quite a hassle, which is fine because you don't really need it to come out. So there we go. There's my palette with all the colors in there. And uh, yeah, now we can do some swatching and I'll explain it a little bit. All right, you guys, so I thought I would just do some color swatching here. I've sprayed up the paints to moisten them up. Uh, you can see I did this not really thinking about how this was going in, so it's gonna be opposite, that's fine. Uh, so this is Hansa Yellow Medium. Um, I thought about doing a cool yellow as well as a warm yellow, but I decided against it. Um, so this is the one that I'll be using kind of to mix with greens, things like that. If I want to mix some oranges, I'll probably be using that. My Hansa Yellow Deep, which is this one right here, this one I will probably be saving for when I just want to do, uh, just want to do yellow. I love, I love it's kind of like orange bias. It's like just this beautiful warm yellow. I mean, I'm sure if I want a yellow like that, I might, you know, I might do the other one. But in general, this one will kind of be my yellow yellow. This one is kind of my mixing yellow. So the next one I have is Pyrrol Scarlet. This is kind of confusing having to switch back and forth between which side this is supposed to be on. This paper isn't the most fantastic. So yeah. So Pyrrol Scarlet, this is my like red red, you know, bright red. Um, I use that for, I don't know, bricks all that kind of thing. Um, carmine, so here you can kind of see, this is, this is interesting. Carmine and quinacridone rose are so similar in some ways. This is the cool red. This is what I hardly ever use. I just, uh, like besides skin tones, skin tones are the one place where I do use it, but I don't do a whole lot of portrait, portrait, um, portrait work. So I just don't find I use it that often. Quinacridone Rose, you can see it's a little more violet, even cooler. So that's the part where, you know, it's silly that I'm making my palette and then immediately rethinking. But I guess that's just the nature of life and the nature of decision making. I, I, I think I could probably take that one out and just have these two and I would have all that I need. So that might be my very next little update. Um, 
So this one I use to mix with a lot of blues, purples. That's how I get purples. Uh, yeah, really nice color. This is cerulean blue, so kind of a lighter blue. Um, I use it sometimes in, well, often if I have like little flags or things like that, anything that's this nice light blue, I use it for skies sometimes. One of my favorite paintings, I use cerulean blue and um, quinacridone rose a lot in the sky and just those really nice like early morning pastel -y sunrise colors really beautiful this is my my MVP ultramarine blue use it for everything uh, you know sky water I don't know this is the one that I have to fill all the time because I use it so much all right uh, then we've got yellow ochre. Use this one for sand, earth, dirt, like all those kind of, oh, buildings. A lot of buildings I'll, I'll do, you know, kind of that for the, the area that's hit by the sun. So definitely use it a lot. Burnt sienna I use all the time, um, especially for shadow colors but also for skin tones. Um, I'll mix it in with yellow ochre, things like that, for kind of those earthy, gra uh, like ground, you know, dirt and things like that. Um, yeah, use it all the time. Same with raw umber, not as much. Raw umber, I usually find I'm putting into something else. So I'll often put it into these two uh, to add some darker accents, some earthier, kind of accents, it's a little more muted. And then I also use that one to mix with ultramarine for some interesting grays as well. Sap green, this is my convenience color. Um, so I use this one, yeah, for a lot of greens as a starter. And then I kind of go from there. So adding in yellow, adding in uh, all these earthy ones to kind of give it a little more browny look. Uh, you know, mixing in some sort of orange. Um, I'll do that occasionally. Not, I don't have orange with this palette, but um, I do with my other one. But you can make up an orange anyway. Cobalt turquoise. This is a new addition, so I, I have to say I haven't painted with painted with it a ton, and it's a color that I'm still I still have yet to kind of uh, do a lot of homework with and find out where all I like it, where all I like to use it. And, and then the last one here is Payne's Gray. So as I said, it's just, it's such a nice moody color. Uh, this paper doesn't maybe allow it to do its thing quite as nicely, but normally it's, I don't know, it just has these beautiful effects. I love the way that it dries, the way that it looks. Yeah, so those are my colors. Thanks you guys. I hope that was helpful for you. I know that making a palette for me, it, it's kind of just a continual process. As soon as I make, you know, set up one, it, it's basically the immediate, I immediately start painting and then immediately start thinking about, oh, maybe I'd like to change this. So that's fine. It's always going to be a process and I still have lots of work to do to get used to the colors that are in here. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it's Jalen here. In this video, I just wanted to show you some of my jumping because I've been working a lot on the jumping. So you can see this is, this is how I do it. Are you going to... Show some more, some side to side jumping. You should show them how you, you're talking jumping, yeah.